One day in midsummer, she is playing with the fish tank. I've had my hand in the fish tank, trying to catch the fish, and then I heard my mom coming. My mother doesn't like me playing in the fish tank, so of course I was like, oh no, what do I do? So then my first reaction was, of course, pull my hand out and then dry it off and act like nothing happened, hop onto the couch and act like I'm asleep. But the next day, Hanalei notices something strange. I'm taking a shower and like, oh, I have a scratch. I was so used to scratches and bruises. It didn't bother me. Hanalei keeps the scratch on her hand to herself. But four days later, she notices that it still hasn't healed. The scratch wasn't getting any better. My hand would throb, and it, it was weird and didn't feel normal. And of course, I was like, oh my goodness, what the heck is wrong with me? But I figured, you know, maybe something got infected. The next afternoon, Amy notices her daughter acting oddly. I could tell that she was protecting her hand. And when I looked at it, she had a cut on her knuckle. I just figured. It wasn't anything a little peroxide couldn't take care of. Amy dresses Hanalei's wound. I didn't want it to spread in the gym nor to somebody else in the family. I wasn't about to let a little infection stop me. Sometimes I would have it covered up. Sometimes I just wouldn't care. But two weeks of peroxide treatment proves ineffective. It was purple and big and swollen and oozy and gross. She'd like get the ooze out, keep cleaning it, and told me to keep it covered. Honolay wasn't getting better, so I called my primary physician and made an appointment. He examined the wound and agreed that it was infected, so we put her on antibiotics. For 10 days, Honolay takes antibiotics, but when she finishes the course and examines the cut, she's surprised by the results. It was still oozy and nasty and wasn't, wasn't right. If you like pressed on it, it was like a burning and then it would like hurt, like something was in there. I was concerned about it. It wasn't going away. So I, I didn't know what to do at that point. So Amy takes Hanalei back to the doctor. He thinks that because the wound didn't heal on the antibiotics, he was gonna culture it for mercy. MRSA is an acronym for Methicillin-Resistant Staphylococcus aureus, a staph infection that can cause significant tissue damage and that's resistant to most antibiotics. In some cases, it's fatal. I didn't know what MRSA was. I didn't know how serious it was. Of course, I was scared. I was like, OK, is this going to affect my gymnastics? Am I going to have to, you know, stop? Three weeks later, Amy takes Hanalei back to the doctor's office for the results. The culture came back negative. The antibiotics still weren't working, and he didn't even at that point know what was wrong with it. I was frustrated at being so far into the infection without any improvement. And at that point, it was getting more painful for her. Struggling to control the infection, Amy lays down some new rules for her daughter. My mom had kept me indoors. So I got to get used to being inside and doing stuff inside. Well, of course, at that point, I was mad and I was frustrated. Hanley remains holed up in the house until Amy takes the kids to an end of summer poolside vacation. So I was afraid she was going to get another infection from any kind of germs that were in the pool. She made me wear a glove. I had to keep my hand above water when I would swim. And that wasn't fun. That was horrible. I was mad. I was really mad. She was very upset with me, but I thought I was protecting her and everybody else. So I did what I had to do. Then, a week after they get home, while Amy is changing out the bandage, another strange symptom appears. I'd be scratching my eyes, scratching my face, all that stuff. I didn't know her to have allergies, so it was kind of odd for her to be rubbing her eyes as vigorously as she was. She's like, you know, like opening my eye, and I was like, what is your problem, lady? Like, what are you doing to my eyes? She didn't understand that I was trying to do it to help her. She just thought I was 
being mean. All around her iris and around all the whole white of the eye had bumps on it. And I'm like freaking out. I was like, dude, why do I have bumps on my eyeballs? It's not normal. We have this unknown thing on her hand and now this unknown thing with her eyes. But not until I saw her a day or two later, actually rubbing her eye with that hand did I connect the two. And that's when I panicked and thought, oh no, I couldn't get it to the doctor fast enough. Her doctor confirmed that it is in fact possible to rub the infection into the eyes. According to her doctor, the infection could make Hanalei blind. The thought of her going blind didn't cross my mind. I was kind of scared. That would be a big tragedy to lose my eyesight at that young. Trying to combat her creeping affliction, the doctor also prescribes antibiotic eye drops. On their drive home, Amy drops by her workplace, where her boss, Dr. Jeffrey Rattat, runs a dermatology clinic. Amy worked for me for several years as a transcriptionist, and she had asked me if I would be willing to look at her daughter's hand. He was kind of looking at it and squeezing and, you know, seeing my reaction to the pain. She was definitely crying. She was in a lot of pain. She had a very tender uh, nodule on the top of her hand. There was a few smaller little satellite lesions around the edges of that. When the labs come back, he has an unusual diagnosis. We finally got the results back, and it did confirm my suspicion that this was a mycobacterial marinum infection. I really panicked. I've never even heard of mycobacterium marinum. At that point, I was like, whoa, man, that's a big word. Like, what does, what does that mean? I mean, I'm not, you know, an adult. I'm not a walking dictionary. Mycobacterium marinum can be highly resistant to antimicrobial drugs. Mycobacterium thrives in a slightly cooler environment. Because of that, it typically infects the muscle tissues of the feet and hands, which tend to be a little cooler than the rest of the body. To head off this infection, white blood cells engulf the bacteria. But the resilient mycobacteria withstand being eradicated and kill the white blood cells from inside out. The bacteria continue to spread across Hanalei's muscle tissue, slowly but surely creeping their way to the bone. I could just tell by the look on her face um, that she was scared. In a third of reported cases, the bacterial infection extends deep into the tissue and can often lead to irreversible damage. Delays in diagnosing mycobacteriosis are common because the microbe is so rare. And even when diagnosed and treated, the bacteria can still migrate to the bone. When this happens, amputation may be the only way to stop it. If the bacteria reach the brain, the infection could be fatal. Are you kidding me? My dream was to go to the Olympics, so I was, you know, freaking out. I wasn't going to accept that there was not anything that they could do. And just as disturbing is how Hanalei contracted this deadly bacteria. Mycobacterium marinum is a bacterium that usually infects fish. It's thought that all species of fish are susceptible to mycobacteria, but humans are also vulnerable to infection and typically contract the bacterium through an open wound. And Dr. Rattat thinks he knows where Hanalei could have gotten the infection. The family fish tank. I remembered specifically catching her several times, putting her hand in the fish tank and trying to catch the fish. I had that I made it clear that she wasn't supposed to be doing that. Fortunately, her course of antibiotic eye drops rapidly clears the infection in her eyes, removing any threat to her brain. 